Good morning, I'm Pastor Allen, and uh, with all the conflict and turmoil and the war in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas, a lot of people are wondering what's going on. The Bible speaks about wars and rumors of wars and conflict, so we need to be aware of what the Bible tells us and then we need to take the lesson and apply it to our lives and the way that we see things. But Jesus gave us plenty of information, gave us things to look for. And one of the things that he talks about in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24 and 25, is for us to be aware of what it was like in the days of Noah. So. What was it like in the days of Noah? Well, the biblical account of Noah begins in Genesis chapter 6. And approximately 1,600 years have passed since the creation of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden and the fall. And the earth's population has expanded in numbers, but it's also exploded with evil. Most everyone had forgotten the righteous sacrifice of Abel, Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. And so we are reminded in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 of this. It says, when the Lord saw that human wickedness was widespread on the earth, and every inclination of the human mind was nothing but evil all the time. So not only was there physical evil, but people's thoughts, their minds, was evil. The mind was nothing but evil all the time. Interesting. Almost sounds similar to some of the situations we find ourselves in today. Now verses 11 and 12 say this, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with wickedness. God saw how corrupt the earth was, for every creature had corrupted its way on the earth. And then we are reminded in verse 8, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now when Jesus began to describe the events that would surround his second coming, he said this in Luke chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People went on eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage until the day Noah boarded the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. And so here Jesus is pointing out that although the people in Noah's day were totally evil or depraved, they were not the least bit concerned about it. They were carrying on with their lives, the everyday bits of their lives, without a single thought of any judgment of God. Well, Second Peter describes Noah as a preacher of righteousness. And it says in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5, And if he didn't spare the ancient world, if God didn't spare the ancient world, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others when he brought the flood of the world on the ungodly, it should be a sign, it should serve as a warning for us. What this tells us is Noah spent years warning his friends and neighbors what the holy God was about to do. No one listened. Wickedness and the ungodly lifestyles of the entire world at that time were enough, they were evil enough, they were bad enough to cause the Lord to say, as it says in Genesis 6, verse 6, well, the Lord was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And so that raises the question of why. Well, many scholars believe that part of the need to destroy every human being except Noah and his family was the sin that's mentioned at the beginning of Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. When mankind began to multiply on the earth and, daughter, and daughters were born to them, the sons of the earth saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful 
and they took any they chose as, the, as wives for themselves. And the Lord said, My spirit will not remain with mankind forever, because they are corrupt. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth both in those days and afterward, when the sons of God came to the daughters of mankind who bore children to them. They were powerful men of old and famous men. And so it says when the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. As evil reproduced and overtook the world, this ended up being the most merciful act that God could perform. Now, it's interesting that God allowed Noah nearly 100 years to complete the building of the ark. And throughout all of that time, God patiently waited. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. Who in the past were disobedient when God patiently waited in the days of Noah while the, while the ark was being prepared? In it, a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. Now, the Bible implies, seems to tell us that Noah preached to the people of that time. Surely they asked why he was building the ark. I mean, you couldn't help but miss it. And he told the people what was coming. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 says this, By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. The people did not believe Noah, and they were content with their wickedness and idolatry. Their hearts were hard and their ears dull. No one repented and no one cared to seek God. And so Jesus said the world will very much will be much the same before he returns to set up his earthly kingdom. All you have to do is look around us. All you have to do is, is, is see the news and you can say, yes, the world is very much, seems very much like it was in the days of Noah. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 31 through 33, Jesus said this, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. And he warned us to be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour or time when you do not expect him. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 for one through four gives us a very clear picture of what the world will be before Jesus comes. And it most likely also describes the world as it was in the days of Noah. It says, Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, But I know this, hard times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And so it, it becomes increasingly obvious that to understand what the world was like in the days of Noah, we only need to watch the news because we're seeing similar things happen. And remember in verse 36 in Matthew's Gospel is pointing to things that are happening and will happen before Jesus returns. It is not the Great Tribulation. This means that Jesus is ready to return at any time. 
And as Christ followers, we must be ready for his return. And we need to remain faithful, even during tough and troubled times, just as Noah did. So be ready. As it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be before Jesus returns. And we need to be ready.